right now the discourse is around the idea of arming trans people. Of course, there's been a lot of talk on the internet about disarming trans people, and then as a retaliation from that, there is a lot of talk about arming trans people and the principles behind that. That obviously is important to talk about because the spotlight is put really close upon us, like just disproportionately so, especially in legislative circles right now. But I also want to talk about something that is often forgotten and something that I actually got in trouble for. I spent years being afraid of speaking about this again. So now that the years have gone by, I'm going to reiterate this point. And I'm not afraid to do so. I think that it needs to be talked about. I think that it needs to be highlighted. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. I still hold these beliefs. Immigrants, including undocumented immigrants, should be armed. Why do I say this? Well, first of all, what does being armed mean in the context of undocumented immigrants? Well, first of all, if the Christian right wing, right wing, you know, the Christo fascists, if we are to uphold family values, then we should be against the idea of separating families, right? Borders, especially human made borders like the South border and whatnot, that's already an unjustified border. It doesn't deserve to be there. It is already crossing onto people's land that already separate people's homes. You know, people who live on that border before it was drawn, they didn't consent to that in the first place. When I was living in Southern California, a lot of people, especially uh, like Latin Americans, were generally saying something to the effect of, we didn't cross the border, the border crossed us. And for many of them, that is their reality. That is how things were, were, were done. Because this such a border wasn't there before. Wasn't there for thousands of years. They had family, traditions, cultures, generations of heritages that was erased and divided because of a colonial border that still is violent and coercive to this very day. People don't just cross the border just because of the fact that there is more opportunity here or that there is many, many drug cartels that is funded by the United States government in the global south or that we as the United States Empire has overthrown governments in the global south for many hundreds of years. It's a little bit more complicated than that. The truth of the matter is, is that we have, and I say we as a settler here, we have separated people's families for a long time. So that border automatically, it's illegitimate. It doesn't deserve to be there, period. Not a, it has no place being there whatsoever. So people come here to, to, to sometimes be reunited with family, long lost cousins, long lost relatives that they have yet to meet. Sometimes they've been separated for 50 years, more than 50 years, several generations removed. And what are, what are we supposed to do about that? Separate them even further? There are children at the border who get separated from their parents in ICE detention centers, and they have to legally represent themselves, sometimes in court, well, always in court, really, if they're legally representing themselves. But you have to understand something here. In the United States, these courts, they're not always in Spanish. And not only that, not all immigrants speak Spanish or English. And sometimes they don't speak the same Spanish or English for that matter. Sometimes they speak Portuguese. Sometimes they speak a more indigenous language. And more importantly, if we're talking about kids who are representing themselves, some of them aren't even mentally mature enough to represent themselves in court, to go through the legal proceeding, to be able to speak ABCs and one, two, threes. 
That shit is serious. Can you imagine a white person doing that? A white person having to cross the border and then having their little fucking child having to represent themselves? Little Tyler, you know what I mean? Do you understand how that is inhumane? It is not justified at all whatsoever. So then what does, what does arming the immigrants mean? Well, there's two ways of doing this here. Obviously, we need to arm them with knowledge of the legal system, how to prevent them getting separated from their families. You know, what are their rights? They have rights when they come here. They just need to know how to represent themselves, how to handle the police when they knock at the door, what have you. That is the thing that they need to be prepared for, and it needs to be available in Spanish. Luckily, there's plenty of resources on how to do so. I'll drop some links in the description if you are interested in learning more about that. On top of that, however, we need to be arming them with food, water, supplies. We need to be arming them with the materials to protect themselves, to be sustained. We need to be giving them shelter. If you happen to know immigrants who are coming across the border who are in need of shelter until they get their visas, until they get their uh, citizenship. And granted, the citizenship process is a really fucking long time. Give them what they need, you know, if you are able to. Try to redirect them to resources if you are able to. Look into the resources necessary to help them get started to be able to sustain a living here. They are working against incredible, horrible fucking odds. We all are. Even U.S. citizens are. Especially me as a trans person. Who, by the way, they want to exterminate me. Even though I'm a U.S. born citizen. They want to exterminate me. Michael Knowles want to exterminate an American citizen. <sighs> the Secret Services, to kind of go on a little tangent here, they owe me an apology because the last time I talked about arming immigrants, they went to my house and they costed me my job in the process because they thought I wanted to kill Donald Trump. I don't want to kill Donald Trump, though... I have some reservations with Donald Trump, currently being indicted right now, currently being arrested, you know, for his allegations with Stormy Daniels, and also just all the shit that went down at the Capitol on January 6, 2021. Is that not problematic to the Secret Services at all? Of course, the Secret Service's job you know, just doing their job, is to protect the United States president. But my video in 2019 was specifically about arming immigrants. And I still think that we need to arm immigrants. Of course, I said something about Donald Trump that maybe should not have been articulated at the time. But the video was clear. Immigrants need to be armed. But I, myself, am not Donald Trump. I don't have the social capital to go storm the Capitol. You know, to organize an entire cult of mega bone fucks to go storm the Capitol. I'm just a trans person who Michael Noah says we should be exterminated. So the Secret Services owes me an apology because what I'm about to talk about is a reiteration of what I said in 2019. Immigrants, including undocumented immigrants, need to be armed with firearms. The Second Amendment should not be exclusive, exclusive to U.S. citizens, should not be exclusive to settlers, should not be exclusive to white people should not be exclusive to landowners. You even got people like uh, Philando Castile, who was murdered as a gun, a legal gun owner. He was a legal gun owner, pulling out his actual fucking license to carry. 
in an open carry state. The NRA, National Rifle Association, didn't say shit about that, nor would they, typically speaking so. They were the ones who were lobbying for the Black Panthers to be disarmed. They advocated in favor of gun control, just like how the right wing is in favor of gun control right now because they want to disarm trans people. So yes, I am in favor of arming immigrants. Arming immigrants. We must arm immigrants to protect themselves, to protect their families, to protect their people, to protect their sustainability and their future. We must show class solidarity, even if it means fighting back an oppressive system against all odds. No if, ands, or buts, no exceptions, no bullshit. We must be with each other. We must stand with each other. I just think that it's absolutely disgraceful that I still haven't gotten an apology from the Secret Services. My livelihood has been detrimented because of them. My life has been a lot harder because of them. Not as hard as the immigrants who come to the United States for an opportunity. Because we, as a nation state, have taken the opportunities away from them. You look at the history of Guatemala or the Honduras or El Salvador, Peru, Brazil, Chile. You look at all those countries, Mexico. You look at all those countries, Panama, all those countries, and what do we find in these countries? We find U.S. overthrowing governments, democratically elected governments, to replace them with a fascistic dictator. Whether it be Jorge Ubico, whether it be uh, Pinochet, Augusto Pinochet, whether it be any of these fucking fascistic dictators, Jair Bolsonaro, we all had some part in that. Whether it be directly or indirectly, we all have some part in that. And I think at least as citizens, who we have the revolutionary potential to fight back against the system, at the very fucking least, we could be helping those who are the most vulnerable. And I say that as a white settler trans person, who is extremely vulnerable. Peace.